Hi everybody, it's Rebecca Virginia and in today's video I'm bringing you some Honey Bee Mini Home Decor. Today's video is sponsored by Cricut. First up in today's minis video is a honeycomb piece of bee decor using some magnets from the Dollar Tree. I am taking this wood shadow box from the Dollar Tree and I totally forgot that I had seen other people do DIYs on this and say it's impossible to take apart and that is totally true. I could not take this apart. So usually I would just take the backing off and then apply the scrapbooking paper down but for this one, I kind of had to just put it inside of the box without being able to take it off. So I took this paper, it's kind of like a lavender lilac color, and I cut it to size. And then the little wood block in the center, I also could not get out. I even used pliers and couldn't get it out. So I just had it to kind of cut around it. And I'm going to end up putting that feels like home sign back on it just with a different saying. So that'll be covered the little bits around the wood block that you can see through. I flipped the little sign over and decided to paint it white. I'm going to end up going in with some honeycomb looking materials that I'll show you in just a moment. But before I could do that, I needed a fresh base. So I just took my Waverly chalk paint in the color white and painted our entire small sign. Then to re-adhere the sign onto the block, I just took my hot glue gun and pressed that down onto it. So I had seen Lemon Avenue do this. I will link her Instagram down below. She does such beautiful crafts. And I saw that she took these wood magnets from the Dollar Tree and made a honey bee sign with them. And that is such an amazing idea because they do look exactly like honeycombs. So I'm placing those down on the center. I'll glue them down in just a bit. But first in the bottom left corner of my wood sign, I wanted to make almost like a little beehive. So I am taking some raffia and just twirling it around my fingers to make a little hive. And again, with the raffia, I wanted to have a nice long bow up at the top. So I'm just making a bow out of it and then adding a bit of hot glue and putting it in the top right corner. Then to really make this bee themed, I brought out my little Cricut Joy. I absolutely love using my Cricut Joy when I just wanna do really fast, final project and I don't want to bring out my whole explore or maker machine and the Cricut Joy works so amazing for this and I just found these little bees on Cricut Access and I am going to be putting these all over my paper. I thought these came out so cute and I am just burnishing them onto my transfer tape and then burnishing them down onto the paper using my little Cricut tool and placing them in all sorts of different directions making it look like they are just buzzing around. As a final embellishment, I would have loved if I could have put a little bee in the hive, but it wouldn't really work with vinyl. So I decided to just add a little flower off of one of the floral picks that I got from the Dollar Tree. I've seen lots of different beehives floating around YouTube and Pinterest, so I had to try my own and I actually made it from a K-cup. For this next DIY, I am making a beehive out of a K-cup. Yes, a little K-cup. You can even use a used one. I had a massive pack that I got from Costco and instead of taking it apart and removing the coffee grounds, I just thought I was going to leave it sealed. But if you really want to be um, not wasteful, you can use a used one. You would just have to empty out all of those coffee grounds. And this is some nautical rope that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to be taking the rope and the hot glue and going all around the K-cup again and again and again until I get to the very top. Once I wrapped the jute in the hot glue all the way around the K-cup, I wanted to add a little hanger on the beehive, so I just took some more of that nautical rope and made a loop on the back of our hive. And it's definitely starting to look like a beehive, but to really drive the beehive point home, I took another piece of nautical rope and made a circle on the front of our hive and that's going to act as the entrance to our beehive. Then I took a paintbrush and a bit of black paint and just painted the inside of our beehive entrance to add a bit of depth to it. I really wanted to put some little bees on my hive but I didn't have any bee beads and I didn't want to buy any off of Amazon or at the craft store. So I decided to make my own 
And for our bee's wings, I am actually taking some of this, I think it's called floral cord from the Dollar Tree. This is from back during Valentine's Day, but they come out with it every season. They come out with one for Christmas, Halloween. I've seen them in all sorts of different colors. So I am just taking some yellow paint and I'm painting these yellow. Again, these are going to be the wings of our bubble bee. For the body of our bumblebee, if you had a black bead or even just a really tiny bead that you could paint black, that would work perfect. I didn't have any, so I took some white sequins and painted it black. Looking back, I would suggest not painting your sequins because I end up going in with just like a Sharpie marker and I think that's a lot less messy than using the black paint. I'll show you in just a second. But I end up putting two bumblebees on my hive. I just took some hot glue and hot glued down my painted sequence and then added the wings, again, using just hot glue. And the wings cut really easily off the garland. I just cut it off with my little scissors and hot glued it on. And there were some places where the sequins had kind of gotten rubbed off since I used the tweezers to pick up the sequins. So I ended up having to go back in with a black marker. So this is why I would say just hot glue the sequins on whatever color it is, and then go in with a black marker or a paint pen. I did the same thing, adding another little bumblebee and also added a, a little bit of florals at the top and a small gingham ribbon. I absolutely love how this DIY came out and I think it's the perfect size to fit on a tiered tray. I couldn't have a honey themed video without trying my hand at making a honey pot. I got these gorgeous graphics from Cricut Design Space. The whole DIY that sprouted this honeybee or bumblebee themed video was that I wanted to make a little honey pot. So I bought this America the Beautiful mason jar. I think it's supposed to be a wind chime at the Dollar Tree during the 4th of July season. And all that I did was flip it over and there was some printed writing that would have shown through if I painted the yellow directly over it. So I just took some white paint basically to prime it. And then for the lid of my mason jar, I wanted it to look metal. So I'm taking the shade Elephant by Waverly and just freehand painting the top of our mason jar. Then to paint my actual honey pot, I am taking the shade Moonflower by Folk Art. It's a really perfect honey colored color. And I am painting our mason jar, which I'm now turning into a honey pot. To add a little bit of definition to the lid of our honey pot, I just took a black marker and added in some lines to make it a little bit more dimensional. I also wanted to incorporate this gingham ribbon again. So I am folding it in half so it's a little bit thinner and then wrapping it around the mason jar and just hot gluing it to the back of our sign. And I probably wouldn't have added the jute ribbon if it weren't for the hole in the top of it, but I actually really like the way that it came out. And I again took my black marker and just added a little bit of contouring to our honey pot. Then I used my Cricut to cut out this really cute honey decal. I found this on Cricut Design Space. They have so many adorable honey and bee themed ones. And I'm going to show you quickly how to transfer. I did a previous video on Cricut where I went a lot more in depth. Basically, you'll just put the transfer tape on top of your vinyl burnish it with a tool and peel away the backing and then you can go ahead and place it down on your surface. I really like how a decal like this just elevates the DIY and makes it not seem like Dollar Tree but maybe something more so you'd find at Hobby Lobby. It's just really nice to take Dollar Tree items or you know just cheaper items, add a decal on them and suddenly they look a lot more high-end. If you're not too into the honey or bee trends, I also think this would make a really cute strawberry jam jar. Next up, I used an unlikely toy from the children's section of the Dollar Tree to make this adorable home sweet home piece of decor. I really wanted to make a mini wood round for this mini's challenge video, but I could not find anything that was small enough and round at the Dollar Tree. And then I went in the toy section and I saw this little dollhouse table and I thought, okay, I think this might be the best I'm going to get. And I was really surprised. I thought it was plastic when I bought it, but it's actually wood, which is really nice for only a dollar to have like paint your own customizable dollhouse furniture. 
So I broke off two of the legs, but I left two, so it's like a kickstand for our wood round. And then I painted the top half with a brown stain and the bottom half in that yellow moonflower color again by Folk Art. And I wanted it to have a black stripe down the center, kind of reminiscent of a bumblebee. So I took some painter's tape and taped it off and then my black paint and I painted a black stripe going through the center of our soon to be wood round. To make it even more honey themed, I decided to put some honeycombs onto the wood round. And to do this, I am taking chicken wire that I got at the Dollar Tree. I always find this in the gardening section and if you do find it, definitely pick it up because I know it's kind of rare to spot. I've seen it a couple times in my Dollar Tree, but it sells out pretty quickly. And that tool that I was using to cut the chicken wire is actually the dog nail trimmers that you can find in the pet section at the Dollar Tree. Works really great for cutting. So I use that tool to cut out the chicken wire so it looks more like honeycombs than chicken wire. And I'm just placing and hot gluing this on the bottom yellow section of our wood round. Next, I am going to be taking some vinyl and my Cricut Joy and cutting out Home Sweet Home. And the first home, I'm using this honey colored vinyl. And even though I have the Cricut Joy, you don't have to just use smart vinyl. You can always use the matte and regular vinyl. I know some people think if you have the Cricut Joy, then you must buy the smart vinyl. I do love the smart vinyl, but you can also use regular vinyl with it too. And while the next sweet home is cutting out, I'm going to start transferring this home. And I am using the Cricut transfer tape. I gotta say, I've tried a lot of transfer tape and this is still my absolute favorite. Especially when you're putting it on paper, it still doesn't rip the paper. A lot of transfer tapes that I have tried, when you actually transfer it onto something, it might rip the project, but haven't had that happen with my Cricut. So I am just peeling this off and I didn't even use a burnishing tool for this one. When you have a really, really small lettering, so you don't always need it. You can just kind of use your finger as the burnishing tool. As the final embellishment on our wood round, I took these laser cutouts from the Dollar Tree and painted it into a bumblebee. And then I just hot glued it into the corner of our wood round. If you see any of the children's wood dollhouse furniture at your Dollar Tree, definitely pick it up because there's lots of things that you can make with them. Today's video is part of the minis challenge by Cory over at Crafted by Cory. I will be sure to link her channel down below as well as the link to today's playlist. Next is a watering can DIY with a subtle bee hint that I think would look perfect on any tiered tray. I purchased this kit from Liz Moore Decal and Decor. She has an amazing wood cutouts website and I thought this one was really cute and I love bead barlin, so I went ahead and purchased it. And I just split up the wood beads, half of them I'm gonna leave natural and half of them I put into this plastic baggie with some drops of dark brown stain and I'm just kind of squishing and shaking the beads around in the stain to get them a nice dark brown color. With my beads stained that dark brown color, I am now moving on to the watering can and I'm going to be painting this yellow. I started off with a light yellow shade called Daybreak from Folk Art, but I wanted it to be a little bit more honey colored, so then I went in with the shade Moonflower, also from Folk Art, and just kind of went over that, darkening up the watering can a bit. Besides the color, I wanted to add another B element, so I used my Cricut to cut out a small black B decal, and I went ahead and burnished that onto my transfer tape and transferred it on to the bottom left corner of our watering can. Now I'm going to show you how to make the actual garland part. So now that my beads are all dried, I am just threading those on with dark brown and the natural, dark brown and the natural. And once I had all of those threaded, I'm going to work on making the tail of the garland. I just took the jute and wrapped it around my hand. And then when I peeled it off, I threaded through the end of our bead garland and just tied that in a knot, leaving a tail because we're gonna use that in a little bit. Then I took another piece of jute, a totally freestanding one, and I just wrapped that around our garland a bunch of times. And after I had it all the way threaded around as much as I wanted, I used the tail from earlier 
and the end of the one that we just spun around and I tied that into a knot. If you need more in-depth instructions, there are like 10 minute long videos on how to make bead garlands. So I would just go ahead and YouTube that if mine was a little too fast for you. Then I just cut off the end of our jute and trimmed it down into the length that I wanted. And with our other end, I am just going to knot that and tie it around the handle of the watering can. For my last DIY in today's mini bee video, I made a faux leather keychain with a bee foil overlay. I placed my faux leather down onto one of the fabric mats from Cricut, and then I took some of this foil transfer sheet and I'm using some painter's tape that I got from the Dollar Tree just to hold that down on top of our faux leather. I'm using the foil transfer tool on the medium setting. It comes with three different types, fine, medium, and bold. So I'm using the medium one. And after I have that into the B cartridge on my Cricut Maker, I loaded my mat and let the Cricut do the work, transferring a silver B image down onto my leather. This was my first time ever working with faux leather or doing a foil transfer, so I was so happy that my bee turned out so well. Then I took out the foil transfer tool and replaced it with a deep cut blade to finish cutting out my keychain. I've only ever worked with vinyl and craft paper. This was my first time working with a new material and I was so happy with how the keychain came out and working with the faux leather was way easier than I thought. To make it into a keychain, I added some hot glue to one side and then folded it over, making sure I did not hot glue the little section where the key ring is going to go through. Then I just threaded through my key ring and my adorable B keychain was complete. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, keep searching, keep creating.